everyone. Welcome to Those Four Girls. We are excited. Um, as you can see, I am with Yvonne. And as we call it on Google+, Plus, we are doing an IRL in real life. So, uh, But we're doing a hangout in real life on Those Four Girls. <laughs> and so, hey, everybody from Sacramento. No, we're actually in Loomis, California. So uh, we are talking today about... Uh, I don't know what we're talking about. No, we <laughs> we're talking about the power of social media in your business. So we're not talking about SEO. We're talking about how you, as a business owner, can actually use social media to better, you know, better your business and and what platforms, you know, how to find the right platform, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not the expert. We brought in the experts. So I want to introduce our two guests today. We have a small panel because we really wanted to dive into this a little bit um, and give you guys some really great knowledge. Not like we never dive into anything, but um, but we wanted to really just, you know, be really, you know, laser focused today for you. So I'm going to introduce Lynn Johnson. Hi, Lynn. Good morning. How's and everybody? We are fabulous. We <laughs> actually slept last night. Yes, that we actually slept. <laughs> so, Good. Lynn, where are you at? What do you do? Share. Well, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. It's so great to be with you. And um, I've, I've been really excited about this. I rescheduled a standing appointment so I could do this today with you. And I currently am in Northern California in the wine country. If anyone's heard of Sonoma Valley, um, it is a beautiful, beautiful spot. And I'm kind of in a, a remote area of the valley called the Valley of the Moon. So um, between that and the house that I have in New Zealand, which I rarely get to go to, of course, you know, when you buy a house in New Zealand, you know it's a 14-hour flight just to get there. And then you need to stay a couple, three weeks at least. But um, that's a vacation rental, and so I run the business from here. So I actually have the advantage of calling two beautiful places my home. And um, mm -hmm. I travel quite a bit for work and for play. So, um, you know, what I do for a living is very conducive to that. So I'm very, very grateful. Well, I love it. I love seeing your foodie pictures and I, you know, and, and all your, you know, blogging posts and everything you do. I, I'm a, I stalk you. Let's just be honest. Thank you. Stalk <laughs> away. Stalk away, honey. <laughs> I don't think you're the only one stalking. I don't think I'm the only one stalking you. Aww. Either. <laughs> you guys are great. Um, and then our fabulous guest from Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Hello. So can you tell us about your business and everything that you do? Well, um, I am a social media marketer, small business enthusiast. I am on a mission to help the local businesses around here um, carve out their niche before we get trumpled by some of the bigger companies. You know, we're in a spot that's really got a, um, a total dynamic of a lot of mom and pops and a lot of big businesses. And so I just want to help those mom and pops succeed. So I am totally on a mission. And I think social media is the way to succeed through that. So um, that is me in a nutshell. I love it. See, you guys, why I brought these two women on here? They're amazing. And ah! surprise! Photo bomb. <laughs> <laughs> me, like me, David Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> these girls are working their butt off. I'm learning a lot getting a lot done, and I just want to stop and say, hey, have a great show, <laughs> Lynn, hi, and hello, everyone, and uh, see you soon. Mark dropped in from Philly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it's going to be a fun show today. Um, so we, we talked in the green room, and we talked earlier this week about, you know, social media. There's so many platforms. How do you start? Where do you start? What's the process? And we're going to dive actually into... Theory, which is something that Lynn, I love to hear Lynn talk about the theory of and the why. And so, um, Lynn, I'm gonna let you start on that, and then Danielle, you guys just, I'm gonna let you guys just ping pong back and forth, you know, on it. Sounds good. Okay. Well, a lot of times, what you know, when I come in, people go, uh oh, because uh, uh, what I do when I start out with a business is I have a little what I call a come to Jesus meeting, right? It's a little bit of tough love. People sometimes call me, you know. A coach, you know, and they, they, well, they call me all kinds of names. But um, <laughs> when I come in to assess a business who says that they want to do social media, the first question I ask them is, "Why? Why do you think that?" And I think this is kind of a universal question, and you know, not to get too deep about things, but really, if you don't have your why to begin with, 
then everything else just becomes kind of a pain and a drain. Mm -hmm. So when you start out with a why, and I know Danielle talks about this in her blog too. She just did a blog series she was telling us about having a mission to start out with. You know, when you start with the why, why you exist, why you as, as a human are here, what's your purpose here, but also aligning that with your business and what you're doing um, to make a life, um, not just to make a living, but also to make a life, um, everything else kind of seems to fall into place. You know, the who, what, when, where, and the how actually unfolds when you have a solid foundation of the why, why you exist, why your business exists, and who you are for the people that you serve. So from that, you can really understand what your mission is for using, using social media. And social media is really a tool to be used and not to let it use you. So what I mean by that is that so many people get caught up in the minutia of social media without really understanding what the nuances are and what the purposes are. And this is the kind of stuff you don't learn in school. You don't get a college degree for this. Um, but there are some amazing books and I'm gonna, you know, maybe I should just do that now uh, just to recommend a few books that are very, very quick reads that mm -hmm. I think will help people lay the foundation for their, uh, their social media tools and the ones that they choose because we have such a big audience here and such a broad range of diverse businesses that it's hard to really pinpoint and I hope that people do ask questions during this time so that we can zero in on some specifics but this book uh, Return on Relationships by uh, Catherine Rose and Ted Rubin is amazing I and mean, you can see it's a very quick read anyone who is interested in developing relationships over a long period of time that lead to sales closing and ROI if you if you will um, to coin a term uh, you really got to read this book it's it's amazing and it talks about R on R return on relationships and another one is that just came out actually is called social media explained and that's by Mark Schaefer and he's actually in Australia speaking right now this is a really great basic book um, it's up to date I mean there are so many resources that people can go to as business owners just to get a glimpse of a foundational approach to social media so um, I think it's really important to look at the indicators in your life and your business if it seems like everything is really tough and you're struggling already social media is not gonna fix it it's not a band-aid it's not a quick fix you know it's a tool and oh, wait, you just said the magic word tool. Clean. Oh yeah, there we go. My coffee. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you know, really, you know, the the new currency of today is loyalty and trust. And so, when you think about using social media, that's really what you're going for is to build long-term re relationships based on loyalty, based on trust, so that people are going to have you at the top of their mind always so that when the need comes up you will be the first one they'll think of to fulfill that need don't you agree Danielle I so very very much agree and um, I actually just pulled out this um, comment I just pinned this comment so I'm gonna see if I can't put it up for a minute Oh, good. Um, this is by Scott, and Scott says, you know, your best secrets to convince small businesses to adopt social media, and I think this goes back to exactly what you were saying, Lynn. We're not trying to convince anybody. When you're ready, when you know your message, your mission, and your market, and you feel ready to take on social media, because it's a journey. I'm not, I never try to convince anybody. So I just wanted to thank Scott for, for first of all, getting the, com the questions rolling, but also just address that a little bit, just back to your point. It's about yeah. feeling ready, feeling confident, and knowing your mission, message, and market. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, Scott has a really good point because um, as a social media agency myself, of course, I'm always looking for businesses, and they're looking for me um, to 
uh, adopt a social media strategy and to implement a social media strategy and I work with businesses to take on their voice so businesses can come to me and actually outsource their social media voice yeah. and I, I can empathize with Scott because there are so many businesses that still believe it or not do not really understand what social media is and how how it can really be best used and so Scott I think you know um, if you adopt your own foundational approach to gaining customers who you perhaps are seeking to get social media business going um, I think it can come from you know a couple of these books that I just recommended as well as I mean gosh there's so much great information out there um, Pam Moore is another one if you follow her blog um, she does a get real chat every Tuesday night on Twitter that's amazing so when you get in on communities of community managers I'm, I'm in some really great community manager groups and um, and so you kind of pick up these tools where like Danielle says you don't really need to convince anymore it's really just about educating people about the basics like super duper basics and Mm -hmm. um, I actually offer a class locally every once in a while I have business owners who come to me and say what's it all about really Lynn help me figure this out and so it, it actually ends up being kind of a fire hose approach because all it, all it does when I start to talk about social media it, it's about a one hour time limit and then their eyes start to glaze over and they just can't handle it because you know <laughs> business owners are in the business of doing their business they have to be in the business, doing the business, providing the services, you know, making the products, pumping out whatever it is they sell. They don't often, they don't have the time to even learn about social media. That's why social media, is like, social media agencies like ours exist, um, to help those businesses really get a handle on it so that it doesn't run their lives, so that they can do what they do best and we can do what we do best. So. I hope that helps a little bit. Amen. I want to go through some comments really quick um, because everybody is loving what you guys are saying. But we, um, we, I gotta just pull up Don Swick. This girl is Hi, Don. <laughs> My Michigan girlfriend. And then um, quick dads or quick tips for new dads. He's dialing in from London. This is his first ever Google Hangout, so go easy on me. Hey, Dave. Uh, <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Dave. And then Kirsten, um, OMG, wow, Mark Seidel. <laughs> and then Susan Finch, hi, girl, how's your thumb? I hope you um, healed that up. Um, oh, how oh, I wish I was there. Hi, Mark Seidel. Aww. Susan, again, she's got some great comments going on. I love this girl. Um, have the why, says Lynn. Have to know it or why bother. Becomes a pain and a dream. Well stated. That's really good. I think we are having a new girl crush right here. I know we're Susan again. We have this total girl crush. <laughs> Susan Finch. This is this is a really I think this is really powerful. Um, and I totally agree with this. Social media is another tool. It's not your strategy. How many times do we have to meet how many times do we need to pound that into everyone's heads? Social media specialists, how many people claim to be that? Really? Are they? I hear these so called specialists and they don't even mention G plus. I cringe. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> it's it's really interesting because uh Oh, there are so many companies that are uh, kind of preying on the need that people have. The business owners, they, they have this need, and there are so many companies preying on this need and uh, just charging outrageous amounts of money to really just do some posting, you know, like five posts on Facebook a week and, you know, a couple posts on your <laughs> Google Plus page a week and a few posts on Twitter here and there and it it does it, it makes me crazy too Susan because uh, that is not the way to build a reputation to build a business to build trust to build consistency continuity all of those things that businesses need to build out, even outside of social media practices it, it's really just another tool to add on to an already healthy business so as I said before, if your business is already suffering and you're struggling, there's a there's a deeper issue that needs to be corrected before you add social media because you know, as a social media professional, I I tell businesses this all the time. It's 
it's kind of like the old Groupon thing. I can drive traffic to your sales source all day long, whether it's to your brick and mortar store or to your website where you sell your products and services. Um, I can drive the traffic there. I can help you do that. But what are you going to do with all of that business when it really starts to flow in? Are you going to be able to handle it? You know, do you have your team in place? Do you have practices and procedures and systems in place that are going to enable you to really do a great job and dazzle those new clients that you're going to get? If the answer is no, fix that first. And, you know, these are the nuances that so-called social media specialists don't get. They don't get it. And really, you can't do it just part-time. I mean, I live, eat, breathe, and sleep social media marketing, <laughs> as well as holistic business practices. So, so I'm in it every day. I have clients that I am their voice and that I practice this. And, um, yeah, it's, it's about really having a, a well-balanced approach. And you don't have to use every channel. And, I mean, maybe we should get into that a little bit. Um, yep. About the different, different that channels. Helps with my questions because my clients with websites always often get taught, "Oh, you gotta be everywhere." So, what do you ladies think about that? Mm -hmm. Danielle, you yeah. want to go ahead? I would love to. I would love to take that. So, um, I definitely recommend when people are first starting to do social media for their business, um, I suggest that they find one uh, network to get started on and maybe support that with up to one or two other networks max. So they're really trying to nail down their social media system for one to two networks. And what I tell them is you really need to know a few things. You need to know your company. So you need to know what strengths do you have. What do you naturally have and what are you naturally producing in your company that you can share free on social media that is really value adding and appropriate for the second thing that you need to know which is your customer so you need to know your company you need to know you is is Instagram appropriate for your business can you be walking around daily with your cell phone taking pictures of everything you know is that feasible for your for yourself is are you more of a quick text kind of person maybe Twitter's more appropriate for you it feels better so, so know your company and to know what you can actually produce as far as content. That will help guide you to choosing your network. Know your customer. Where are your customers already? The typical customer, if somebody's doing B to C type of business, they are not on seven or eight or nine different networks. They maybe check two or three a day. And you really only need to be on a couple of those. And the other thing is you need to know your competition. Where are they? And is it working for them? So go go check out your competitor and see if they're on Google Plus. And if they are, do are they actually able to attract fans? Because um, you want to make sure that your market is on the network that you choose. I actually have a great <laughs> slide share presentation that I've created um, all about choosing the right network for your business um, where I talk about you know six networks individually and so if anybody is interested in diving into that slide share um, I'll put the link in the comments um, but really when you're choosing your network I suggest you only start with one primary and one secondary and get those right first prove to yourself that you're actually converting sales or building brand exposure before you try to tackle three or four or five different networks. How do you feel about that, Lynn? Yeah, it's always a good idea. You know, I always say inch by inch, it's a cinch. So when you're starting out and you're overwhelmed, you know, and you know where your audience is hanging out, that's where, that's where you want to go. Um, you know, I mean, there are so many great channels. And it's funny, you, you know, you have all of these uh, infographics like, Social media explained by a donut, right? <laughs> Social media explained using coffee. Social yes. media explained. There was one I just posted that was from an Adobe conference that was social media explained by pee. Like, here's where I pee, you know. Here's, if you want a recipe for the donuts, you know, Pinterest is like, here's my recipe for donuts. Instagram, 
here's my donut. You know, isn't it sparkly? You know, and and it's so interesting because it's a real. Those are really fun infographics that kind of get to the heart of what each channel kind of is about. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do anything without Twitter. I wouldn't do anything without Google Plus <laughs> using the Hangout tool. You know, you really need to know. Um, what tools best suit you. Again, we're back to that. Um, because I can't even imagine now having a presence online without being, without using the Hangout tool. I mean, it's, it's amazing the, the technology that is providing us these, these things now. And if we're not using them effectively, then we're just kind of wasting time. We're playing around and nobody's really making any money. We're all just kind of here visiting and being fun and like and like we've said on Mia Voss's show you know you can be popular but but you could be popular and broke too right so <laughs> yeah. you want to make sure that you're what I call making bacon right uh -huh. and um, and that you're structuring your time so yes be on Facebook yes be on Google Plus yes for sure be on Twitter you know on Twitter you can build an audience so fast because you know, using hashtags, you can index uh, any anything in the world, and you can grow. Speaking of in the world, you can grow businesses globally. So again, as Danielle says, you need to know your business and know whether you want to grow locally, grow nationally, grow globally, and to see where your audience is. And that's just a matter of doing your research, doing your homework, asking questions. Um, when I take a new client on, that's part of what I do is I'm going out and I'm doing tons of research um, I'm, and I'm looking at their competitors and I'm looking at where those, those people are, where they're hanging out. LinkedIn is a great tool for co uh, connecting with other professionals and you know I don't even use the terms B2B and B2C anymore because it's never really resonated with me because I'm so interested in putting people first and I think that every business owner also might want to be interested in putting people first. Um, yeah. You want to look at it as human to human as Brian Kramer says or people to people so now it's P to P it's no longer B to C, B to B because wherever there are people there are potential customers, referral partners, um, affiliates, associates, I mean I think one of the things that we forget about often in business is referrals. You know, how many referrals are you getting? And how are you measuring that? Do you know, you know, where the where the business is coming from? Are you asking where the business is coming from? That's another good way to gauge your engagement on the social media channels that you choose. And you know, tomorrow on Mia's show, um, she's gonna have Sue B. Zimmerman and she's gonna be talking about Instagram you know she is an Instagram expert I can't wait to hear more tips from her because I personally love Instagram yes it's mobile yes it's it's got limitations and you gotta know the the demographics there too so mm -hmm. for each channel you know there are demographics that we need to dig in and learn about what are the age groups of the people using these channels you know who are these people what are the sheer numbers I mean uh, the sheer numbers alone on Facebook indicate that you might want to have a presence on Facebook. It doesn't. You don't have to get sucked into any one platform and be wasting time, endless hours. You know there are ways to discipline yourself to do that. And believe me, I I, I wasn't always that great at it, but I've learned over the last ten years how to discipline myself and not get sucked in, right? Because then it's like you go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> right, Danielle, you probably have had the same experience. I, I, so I have a, a kind of spectrum of clients that I work for, and part of my service for a few of them is actually um, maintaining their Pinterest presence. And I will tell you, for those of you out there that are Pinterest fans, yes, Lynn, there is a <laughs> rabbit hole that you can get caught falling down if you are pin are doing Pinterest and. For me, the saving grace is having a schedule and a routine. Mm -hmm. I know how long I'm going to spend on Pinterest. I know how many pins I'm trying to pin. And I know the categories I'm trying to cover and the boards I'm trying to fill. 
So if you are clear about your goals, and this is not only about, you know, mm -hmm. being on Pinterest for 45 minutes or whatever it is, it's also about social media. You know, if you're clear about your goals, then the journey to get to that goal becomes more and more clear. Um, right. And you brought up such a good point, and I, I just want to reiterate that where you were saying, you know, you kind of got to know where you're starting from. Um, and, and the term I use are benchmarks. You need to know your benchmarks. Uh, so you need to know how many people are visiting your website daily, monthly, weekly, um, how many people are on your email list mm -hmm. and how many people are on your your fan base and then the same things for the competition as much information as you can gather mm -hmm. and so once you get those benchmarks you can start to very um, productively and very intentionally track your growth so that you know where you where's most efficient to dedicate your time yeah and, um, yeah yeah uh, those are you know also called key performance indicators, KPIs, and yes. again, you've got to know what those are. And it's different for every business, obviously. And so that's why a lot of times, you know, when we talk about measuring and analyzing um, the social media exposure and what that's generating for each business, I think it's really important to know, you know, where you are right now and what would make you feel successful down the road. What are you investing right now in an advertising and marketing budget, for example? Because social media is a part of that. It's a part of that line item budget that you have designated for advertising and marketing, for example. Um, so it's very important to know what your key performance indicators would be. And very often it's the traffic. You know, for a restaurant, it's what Robert Caruso calls butts in seats, right? You want to make sure that you have the people sitting in your restaurant ordering food um, and you want to know what it is that you need to make a profit daily weekly monthly yearly so if you're able to generate more traffic into your restaurant traffic to your website for example if you have a web-based business and then you have people being referred to that business and then you have people returning to the business I have one client who works with generations of customers she now has serviced three or four generations of customers because she's been in the business for 36 years. So those are key performance indicators. Adding social media to that only widens her scope and her reach for having more generations because now she's going to pick up some of the younger generations, right? Mm -hmm. And So this is important. You've got to make it easy for people to do business with you. Make it easy for people to do business with you. Make it easy for people to refer you. When I have somebody that is in need of some kind of a promotion or they want me to plug their business in some way, you know, I always say, you know, post it somewhere. I'm on all the channels. Post it and tag me. And I'll, cl I'll click and I'll promote you. It's that simple. And some of the other lesser known and maybe um, underrated uh, social media sites, and um, hopefully, Yvonne, this this will help answer your question too for your clients. Is Foursquare? Um, it's Foursquare is fantastic. I mean, it's debatable where they're going. They just got a big infusion this past year, forty-one million dollars, uh, to do something with. And I'm really hoping that they make it because I like Foursquare personally. I check in on Foursquare, where you can geolocate your business and uh, really. If you have a local business, especially a brick and mortar, you want to make sure that people are playing that game. It's all game based, but human beings love to play games. They love to become the mayor of a business for no other reason than they have that designation. It seems like the silliest thing in the world, but it's really fun. It can be very engaging, and you can actually use it to market and promote your business if you're listed and registered as a business on Foursquare with a brick and mortar. So that's a really good one. For restaurants, I think food spotting and um, there are so many really good ones. But I use food spotting all the time because that's where you can post your food po photos and where you can promote local restaurants and cafes and coffee shops that you like. I, I do it everywhere and that's what Lainey was talking about earlier. Um, when you have, for example, the mobile app for food spotting, you can cross promote to six other platforms. So from food spotting on your mobile app, you can cross promote for that business on 
um, Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter. And you can even email the post out, which I never do because I don't like to fill up people's so we're, we're going in a direction that I really want to go into with is the hows and the, um, of how you guys do some of it. But I want to hit, hit some comments really quick. Okay. So like Yvonne has something before, to say, too. Before you jump into the comments. <laughs> Yvonne's like, we're like, ah! <laughs> um, yes, I definitely have my brick and mortar stores on Foursquare as well as food spotting. Now, if somebody could just get an app, that takes my login and does it automatically log me in on Foursquare and posts my food on Food Spotting and logs me in on Google Plus and Facebook, then I'm happy. Right? Yeah. You can jump in some comments. I'm so with you. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right. Out of music, I think social media is important these days because the public, your potential customers, expect to find you there. It's almost directory assistance at a minimum. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I agree. So spot on. on. Thanks to food spotting, I always keep finding nice food. Mm -hmm. And then Michael Young. Um, hi there, everyone. This is confirming things I'm learning across the board. Excellent stuff. Hi, Michael. And then Danielle, uh, you know, she decided to share her uh, slide share with everybody. So I wanted to highlight it so you guys knew to go find it. Um, and then Sandy um, says, love people to people. Even at the B2B, there's a person looking for solutions, what you have to offer. People build relationships and connections with other people. It's huge. Um, and then segueing into Susan Finch's comment of B2B and B2C terms are becoming a bit outdated. Relationships. Thank you for confirming what I've been preaching recently, Lynn. How much of your business comes from referrals? That's a great measure, not only of your engagement, but your visibility if you are doing the one hit. Group on, grab, go, and mo customers. And on to the next, you won't last. You'll run out of the gullible, really. <laughs> so Yeah, it's so true. And it's a reason why Groupon, you know, had so much legal trouble too, because um, you know, and I was I was with a Silicon Valley startup for almost two years. And uh, we tried a deal program, you know, we tried to kind of replicate that and and I headed that up and um, it was a pilot program. And we, I, we did a lot of research on all of the deal sites, including Groupon and Living Social and some of those other ones. What we found is that the business owners were not being coached properly. And so what was happening is that the business owners were making promises that they couldn't deliver on. Wasn't necessarily their responsibility completely, although I would put most of the responsibility on any business owner. Um, but, you know, when you have a, a deal site like that, for example, it just shows you that you really need to know, as Danielle said earlier, you need to know yourself, you need to know your business, you need to know how much business you can really handle, and then it, then it becomes a first world problem. Then it, it's what I call a quality <laughs> problem, right? When you have to figure out how you're going to deal with all of the traffic that comes to you. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, in there, I'm in there with you, Lynn. We locally here had businesses that went out of business because they have not been coached right with Groupons and they couldn't handle it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think that um, the, the one thing that I would encourage businesses to remember and keep as a foundation is that making really good money and being super successful financially and making an extraordinary difference in the world are not mutually exclusive. So you can do both. Well said. You can be you can be extremely successful financially and and make a difference. And when you have that as your mission, and I have that as my mission because I I can't work with every business who comes to me for help. I just I can't. It's impossible. There is so much business out there and that's why I wrote a blog post about um, collaboration is the new competition, right? I don't believe that there's any such thing as competition in a negative way. I think that competition can be very good. It keeps us sharp. It keeps us on our toes. We need to know who our competition is out there in the marketplace. But really, there is so much business right now um, out there that all of my business is referral business. So when somebody comes to me, I screen them very carefully because if I don't feel that I can make a difference for that business, I will refer them to a social media agency that I know and love here in town. Um, I have friends who are also in the business and we network with each other and we refer to each other. Um, so in fact, they bring me in on projects that where they need help 
you know, for a social media street team, for example, for the film festival or anything that we're doing, we do collaborate. So it's not mutually exclusive to make great money, to have a life where you, you know, I think another key performance indicator would be, do you have a life outside of your business? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's huge. And when you're talking about measuring return on investment, or you're talking about analyzing how, how your business is working for you, then you have to consider, do you have a life? Is, is your life filled with the things that, that fill you up, that energize you, that feed you? If it's not, again, go back to basics. And, and then really, you know, the channels that you're on are only going to serve to help make it easier for people to find you. You know, as Adam was saying, it is like the new Rolodex or the new phone book mm -hmm. being on social media. And on, on the whole um, competition part, I've seen small businesses clash into each other locally here, and I don't get it. The client decides who they want to work with. They're going to make the decision. So if you are trying to work against another company or somebody else, you just put yourself out of the possibility of getting that because the client is going to know. Yeah, that, that never works. It never works when you're, when you're competing with someone else. I think, and I've always lived this way in my life, is that my biggest competition is myself. It's getting out of my own way. Mm -hmm. right? right? You know, it's knowing, it's knowing what you're worth and really taking a stand for being extraordinary and, and not settling. It's just like in anything. It's like in a relationship. You know, if you're settling, you're losing. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing when, when you're working. Um, you're working for yourself, with yourself. You are your own best customer. And if you're not, you got to fix that. And then it's reaching out to your to your audience and to your clients and making sure that your clients are going to return, that they're going to talk about you in a good way. And this is the other thing I, I wanted to bring up about social media is that, um, you know, Scott was talking earlier about convincing. Well, here's one way that a business can be convinced is that businesses are being talked about every day. Every single day, businesses are being talked about. They're being reviewed. They're being mentioned on any and all platforms. So if a business is not participating socially, if they are not a social business, then they are out of control. If they are participating socially, then they can be in control of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Right? So good. Yes. So it's really important as a business person that you be in control of the conversation. Don't let it happen where you're being talked about all over the interwebs and you don't have a say about it. Um, and I'm not talking about ne uh, negative stuff either. I'm talking about being able to really hone in and capitalize on the great things that people may be saying about you. Um, this is all very, very valuable business building stuff. And it goes way beyond strategy. It's, it's more like a business lifestyle. Um, and, you know, it, it, I don't know what else to say about that. It's, it's really important to, to just be in control of your own conversation. Well, let's take, let's take how, you know, how, how do we control it? Like, what tools, you know, how do we, how do they, you know, because we're so inundated with social media, right? We have, um, we have all of our major players, you know, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, Foursquare. How do you manage? I okay, mean, one word. You one word. Them. Okay, go ahead. One word. One word. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I had one of my old, you know, uh, presidents of my company, who's a good friend of mine for 30 years. She said she always would say, "God gave us two ears and one mouth. That means we need to listen twice as much as we speak." Amen. Yeah. So when we're listening, we can gain so much information about how to conduct ourselves in business. Um, and, and there are lots of listening tools on, I'm not even going to get into them all, I mean, there's Hootsuite and even Twitter is a listening tool, Google is a listening tool. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not searching your own business and your own hashtags, uh, then you're really in the dark, right? So mm -hmm. 
I would just say listen and um, and use tools that make you efficient. You know, I talked about this on on Mia's show about business efficiency and. You know, I have certain tools that I invest in. I pay money for every single month that I would not be without. And I I could shout it from the rooftops. Rooftops. People are so tired of hearing me say it, but I'll continue to try and make life easier for other social media professionals. And even now, um, someone like, like you guys who are just really wanting to do some personal branding, there's a new program with Bundle Post where for $20 a month, you can have the command of, of that command center and then you use it with dashboards like Sendable, Hootsuite, I mean it's integrated with so many dashboards. It's like putting those dashboards on steroids. So if I were to, to give up one of my trade secrets that really makes me look good and makes me look smarter than I am and helps me uh, curate content which believe it or not when I'm posting for myself and for clients I'm posting only about 10 or 20 percent of our own messages. There's only 10 or 20 percent push messages like look at me, look at me, buy from me, look how great I am, look at my new blog post. No, it's it's either 90-10 or 80-20. Mm -hmm. The other 80 or 90 percent is information to what we call edutain, right? Like infotainment mm -hmm. and and it's pulling in blog posts from people like Danielle, from people like Oh gosh, um, and so Lynn, many. Mike love, Alton. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I would love to throw something in there because I just had exactly this ninety ten eighty twenty conversation somewhere else. I think you saw that too. Mm -hmm. Somebody was challenging the eighty twenty rule, and at the end of that thread, we got to the point where he is not challenging the eighty twenty rule. He is challenging the implementation. So if you hear 80-20 rule, everybody out there, that doesn't mean you just post grandma's recipes for 80%. You need to post other people's content and information that match your business and your voice. Not everything else, it needs to match your strategy. Exactly. It's got to yeah. be relevant. So the rule is that we normally choose uh, three three. Three things about your life that you want to become known for. And the, the three things for me are social business, food, and travel. And then, of course, it goes without saying family, friends. You know, I interject some personal things. I have a blog post about that, too, about uh, being personal. And Pam Moore did a really good uh, video blog about this. Like, what is too personal to be posting about your brand? Because basically, you need to make it personal, but you don't want to make it too personal, if you know what I mean. So that's a judgment call, and what you're saying, Yvonne, is so, so true. Your content, the 80 or 90 percent that you're posting, has got to be relevant to those things that you, that you are known for and that you want to be known for, not just all over the place. Yes. I'm sorry, Mark is sidetracking oh. me from over there. He's making <laughs> weird faces in my door. <laughs> so, you know what? Um, oh, I'm cracking up here. Okay, so hold on. Um, let's see. Mike said, Michael, sorry. Um, listen, that is so important, Lynn Johnson. And then um, Mark said, um, Lynn Johnson said, tool, y'all are slow. <laughs> 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 Um, and then a compliment from Dora to Lynn. Just have to say your skin looks great. And I love the colors on your eyes and lips. Aww. <laughs> what I noticed. So I had to throw that compliment in there. It's sweet. Well, I, um, have a, I have a little secret for Dora. You know, for more years than I care to admit, um, I've been part of an MLM, which is Jafra. And so when people tell me that, I go, oh, thank you. Because I used to be full of acne. And I used to be trying to tell people how to take care of their skin, and I still was very successful. Why? Because it's 90% enthusiasm and 10% mechanics. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the compliment. I can't take all the credit, <laughs> but that's, that's my little outing myself as you know, <laughs> one of my one of my long-standing businesses. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, so I. 
Um, I'm looking at the clock here. We've got about 15 minutes left. And, and I wonder, you know, you guys have been talking about, I mean, we've gone through um, from theory to the hows and the whys. Um, what is, like, you know, Lynn, you just added yourself with, your, you know, your big tip to, you know, to um, make yourself look smarter. How do, you know, how do you manage, um, how do you, without, if you can't afford to pay for a social media manager or specialist, how do you manage your time? Like, what's a good, you know, is there like a three-step process that says, I need to evaluate this, this, and then, <laughs> and then, is there something that you guys can break down? Because not everybody can afford to hire a social media marketing expert. Get in there, do you know? Always are they going to find the right one, so. So with Lynn already sharing some of her tools, Danielle, what are you using? What are you, what's your process? All right. Well, I'll talk a, about both of those things. So first, I'm gonna I'm gonna link drop here in the comments. Um, Lainey, you were saying, you know, what is that simple process that everybody can do, and to to at least introduce themselves if they're not ready to in, invest money to at least get to know social media. So I actually broke it down to the ABCs, um, <laughs> and I wrote a blog post about it, and it's very thorough and I hope that people are going to find like tons and tons of great information so I've link dropped that um, but also back to what you were saying Yvonne the tools you know here's two very free very basic things that I think that everybody can do are set up Google alerts for your business name and any hashtags that you like to use because that's a completely free way for you to be listening across the web um, and not necessarily network specific. So definitely look into setting up Google alerts for yourself and for your business. Um, and the other thing I want to recommend people do is start using, like I use um, Feedly as my RSS reader and I have hooked up myself with my favorite blogs that are about social media. I RSS them into one master list and then every morning I'm going back to that idea of having a schedule so start scheduling social media into your day, whether it's the first hour of your day with your cup of coffee, or you're going to read through your RSS feed, pick out five things that you know are worth sharing, and like Yvonne said, relevant to your customer and your company, and then share those that day or pre-schedule them using tools like Hootsuite, or my other favorite is Buffer, um, Buffer app, and so use those free tools to then schedule your week. And now you've spent one hour that morning, you know, sipping on your coffee, but curating valuable content. Uh, and I just think that that's such a good way to do social media is to use those tools, have your schedule, and just know that it's a process. So be willing to, uh, even if you're, budget your time so that you know that you have two hours this week to social media or you have three hours to spend on social media um, and then sit down at your computer and actually do it. Uh, there's this there's this two minute rule and I don't know if you guys have heard of this before but if you're trying to tackle a project and you really are having a hard time getting started you know you might catch yourself procrastinating or you might catch yourself just you know messing around on Facebook checking the news feed but you're not actually sharing content as your business Take two minutes, set a timer, and just be really productive for two minutes and watch how that momentum catches on. It, it's amazing. So just challenge yourself to do two minutes of really effective sharing, sharing one or two really important posts across whatever networks or introducing yourself to a new tool. And those things are going to be incredibly valuable. The other tool I want to just shoot out here before I... I past the mic, so to speak, is um, IFTTT. It's a, it's a free tool called If This Then That, one of my favorites. It's all about automation. Mm -hmm. So if you can think, I want every one of my um, Google, or I want every one of my Facebook posts to go to LinkedIn and Twitter and um, Instagram, then you can set up automations using this IFTTT tool to automatically push your notifications through. You can also do it to um, link your Instapaper to your Evernote. You know, uh, I'm throwing out names of all kinds of tools here because 
they're worth exploring, and if they fit your lifestyle, then they're totally, a lot of them are free, so they're easy to incorporate into your life. You know, Danielle, you did a post in the community, what, a week or so ago, and we were talking about, you know, that process, and and I, my process, because uh, everybody's like, you're always on, and I was like, yeah, but I, I got tricks. <laughs> <laughs> and I used, I used DoShare, which, um, uh, <laughs> I can't even go there. Um, I use DoShare, and then I go to, and I, I set it up to um, Friends Plus Me, and then Friends Plus Me goes out to... Um, Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, and then I use IFTTT and I use Hootsuite. So I can literally automate everything. I can start with Google Plus as my hub and, and automating from DoShare, and then everything goes out from there. Believe me, after two years of that, you suddenly have posts appearing somewhere and you don't know where <laughs> they're coming from. Yeah, so you have to be careful. <laughs> you do have to be careful because if you set up too much automation, you end up with double and triple, which I have had that before. Actually, I have that right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have, but if you're effective, you know, um, you can you can create some efficiencies really easily with the automation tools. And yeah. the only one that you can do to automate to Google Plus is DoShare. So just yeah. so you all know, um, well, Hootsuite does to Google Plus pages, but to yeah. your personal page. Right now, DoShare is really the only one I think that does your personal page. And there, there are some workarounds to if um, per mm -hmm. posting per email, and there are some other workarounds, but the easiest one is the DoShare. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a tool squirrel. You guys all know that. So I love <laughs> that. And, I mean, this is hilarious. <laughs> the same comment that I saw. <laughs> Okay, it's so funny. Adam Music. Do you know how hard it is to set up yes. an alert when your last name is Music, Danielle? Do you? <laughs> I know, right? Adam, I'm sorry. That does sound <laughs> crazy. So start branding yourself with a hashtag that's unique, yeah. and then you can search for that hashtag. And then it's just about teaching your customers to use it. That's I also funny. love this comment, um, and at Lynn, I think you and I can probably give some really good advice here. So this comment came from Valerie. She says, um, but I get distracted and I have four clients to prepare for, so ideas to keep me straight on the go. Um, do you have some tips, Lynn, that you want to share about that and then I can address it as well? I got two words for you, Valerie. Bundle post. <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah, and how do I get rid of this? You oh click the eye again. Click the eyeball again. Oh, click it again. Okay, sorry guys. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's really simple. I, it, it will make you so much more efficient and productive. And, uh, yeah, I, I, wish I, I wish I were part of that company. But I'm just a customer. And it's amazing. Yeah, you've been talking about Bundle Plus Post for a while. So, um, so I'm excited I, to go check it out now that they've got the personal. Yeah. They just set up the personal one, right? Yeah, I, yeah they just set up the personal um, and I would love to show your face, but you haven't clicked. <laughs> How do I do it? <laughs> you know what I think? I see. I told you guys. I'm. I deleted. The, I think I deleted the comment. Or what did I do? I, guess, I thought that was so funny that what Adam said. Here's another one. Let's see if this will work. There you go. <laughs> did that work? Yeah, well, it, yeah, now, so you gotta, yeah. Oh, there! Yes, she is! There's oh, and now I'm backwards. Okay, good. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, here we go. Okay, um, yeah, I would a bundle post. I, I don't know what else to say. It's, it just makes life so easy and so, so comprehensive. There's no other, no other site, no other software like this. That's why I happily pay my bill every month. I'm just ecstatic. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, this company not only has a great product for all of us to use, whether we're just starting out or whether we're a full-on agency that's handling multiple clients, but uh, you know the customer service makes all the difference. And I swear, I wouldn't stay with any company that didn't have impeccable customer service because with technology tools, you do need to have that. You know, it's yeah. you've got to have somebody to reach out to that's a real human being that knows the product and and not only knows the product but is a user of their own product you know that I was with the Silicon Valley startup and so many of the people developing the product didn't even use it so it was very difficult for them to have empathy for the customer this company bundle post they get it they get it big time try it out and, and Lynn is not an affiliate for them just so y'all know I, I'm not an affiliate for anybody <laughs> <Should be. laughs> you know, 
I say like I'm a, I'm a profile, and you'll see it on the Google Plus About page. Everything is there, all of my links, my profile, and I say brand evangelist. But really, I'm I'm always pimping out companies that I love. <laughs> And that's that's what we need to use for our own companies. If you can build a client like Linus for Bundle Post, you are set. Because exactly. that's the best advertising you can get out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. That's what you want. That's the ultimate goal for me is to create an army of evangelists that you're not even paying to be out there and, and being so visible. I'm a pretty visible person and um, and I have a lot of connections, in, you know, not just in the United States, but in New Zealand as well. And so when I'm promoting something, it's being heard, you know, it, within a pretty far reach. Mm -hmm. So that's, yes, you're absolutely right, Yvonne. That's what you want to create in your business. And, and I think that's a huge uh, key performance indicator to put into your business plan. And I think we're going to close it up with that because we got like four minutes left. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, now, you guys have been amazing. I mean, I have to go back and watch this because there's so there's just so much content. And, and I'm always like personally tweaking stuff. I, I think everybody, every business owner should be, you know, personally mm -hmm. perfecting and trying to find those things that make you more efficient because we literally could live and spend our lives, you know, like Lynn said, you know, if you're not, if you don't have a life, you couldn't be spending it on social media. <laughs> so, um, yeah. girls, what is your um, call to action? Where do we find you? And um, one quick last tip, your favorite, like, top line item that everybody should be doing coming out of this show. Like, you know, what should they do to, you know, fix themselves? No. <laughs> Improve. Go ahead, Danielle. Okay. Um, so my last tip is going to be to... Um, Use social media as if you're in real life with people. So when you're posting, please don't try to sound like a robot. Sound like a human being. Hey, I just came across this great article and I want to share it. You know, so just really be, um, when you're typing out a post, when you're sitting at your computer and that cursor is blinking at you and you're trying to come up with a post idea, imagine your best friend sitting right across from you and you're trying to share this tip or resource with her and speak or him, and speak directly to your friend and type that. Um, people understand and people respond really well when they feel like you're being real. So my tip is to be real. <laughs> and um, my call to action is please, please, please uh, go ahead over, check out my blog. I love providing tons of great free tips. Um, join my email list. I Anybody who's on my email list, I welcome them to shoot me questions via email, and I will respond to them. And if you're on Pinterest, find me there because I'm a big Pinterest fan. I'm at MMM Social Media, and um, I look forward to connecting with all of you. Off to you, Lynn. Yay. Yay. Well, I, I want to reiterate uh, that one word, listen. But then I also want to say, I guess, uh, a really – important tip would be that if you don't already possess this, develop a tasteful sense of humor. <laughs> so Deve so Develop a tasteful oh. sense of humor. So, you know, there's certain things that you don't want to talk about even though they're really funny. And, uh, you know, I know my, my nephews and nieces when they were little, there were a couple of words that would always make everybody laugh. But you don't want to do that on social media. You don't want to do what a two-year-old does. You want to just have a tasteful sense of humor. And people really respond to that on, across all of the channels. And uh, so I think that's, that's very important. And, you know, I'm at peopleforward.com, peoplefw. I, I say peoplefw, it really means putting people first, putting people ahead of everything else, all of your other considerations, including yourself putting yourself in that category of being first. And uh, so I'm on Twitter, at PeopleFW. Here on Google+, Plus, you'll see on my About page all of the links there. And uh, I really welcome you to, to come and say hi. And let's start a conversation. Thank you so much for having me again, those four girls. Yes, thank yes, you. You, are, you guys are amazing. Thanks for joining us. And um, next week we are having Rebecca Radice, Jessica Duell, uh, Annabelle Hilarski, and Ryan Rhodes. We're talking about branding. We're going to do a branding smackdown. So actually, 
here's the thing. If you would like to have Rebecca Radis and those um, four, they're branding experts, um, graphic experts and all that, if you want to have your graphic and your branding reviewed, uh, send it over to me and I'll be sending it over to them. And we, if you're, if you're open to the good, the bad, and the ugly about your brand um, <laughs> and willing to listen to some constructive criticism and, and really get some evaluation uh, for free on the show, we are going to be um, looking at brands if anybody wants their brand to be looked at. So that's next week. We're so excited. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, Mark Seidel is saying hi. Yes, hi. I just want to say, how about these two girls down here in the rock, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm headed back to the closet. <laughs> Mark. Leave the door open. <laughs> the door open, she says. <laughs> um, no, everybody, thank you guys for joining us every week. Um, same time, same place. We are changing um, our show soon to a different day, so stay tuned for that. We'll be announcing it in the next week or so. So talk to y'all later. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.